starting to get a little dark. Finish the fucking race. Just keep Just moving forward. forward. Um, we know you can do it. We're really proud of you for making the Try effort and attempting, attempting again, yeah. so you got this. Yeah. Like I said, you feel like you let down all the people who spent their time and money to come out and crew you and pace you and, uh, you know, I'm over for 2 on these races now, so. I need to get some food. Bad crash. I have food on me, but we're really close to the aid station. Instead of stopping and eating, we're just moving forward. Pretty soon I couldn't stop the nauseous feeling and I lost. I just started puking like on the side of the trail. You can only rely on yourself. You have to get out of there, you know? I keep hiking, keep moving. And because there's still so much climbing and stuff left and now I've thrown up everything. One, my energy totally tanks. Two, I start going through some serious like cramping. Now like my hamstrings, my quads are cramping up as I'm hiking up and down this stuff. And uh, I knew that I had to like get myself together. Aid stations can be such a revival for you. So I was very like lucid during all of this, but knowing how to fix it and being able to fix it is two different things. So the next cutoff time is now 1.15. And again, it, it's like a five minute bout of like getting your shit together. You know what I mean? Like you throw up, you got your hands on your legs, you're dry heaving, your stomach's nodding up, like you're shaking, you got spit coming out of your mouth. It's not just like, oh, puke. I'm like, I'm running and happy. Like, it's not like that. Like it was, and you hear Ultra talk about like sometimes when they throw up, they feel better. Like I wasn't feeling better. Yeah, so I had, it was 1.30 in the morning. I knew I missed the cutoff. Uh, I'm walking down the road. This car pulls up, was like, hey man, like you want to ride to the aid station? Like you missed the cutoff. This was somebody who had actually finished this race like six times. So they know what's going on. And they're like, they're, you know, there's no point in like hiking this thing out, you know? Like your crew is waiting for you. So they pick me up, drive me to the aid station. I see the whole crew like walking down the road. They were like gonna come look for me. Cause at this point it was like 1.30 or so. I'm past the cutoff, you know? You go through all the feelings. I was still dry heaving a little bit. I didn't have pretty, I had nothing left in my stomach. I dry heaved a little bit at the car. And uh, it's funny though, cause uh, it just makes you wanna get back in the arena again. I don't know. I'll probably keep, I'll keep doing them. I'll keep chasing a buckle. I'll keep doing them until I get one. I do feel like it just, every time I do one, it just builds something in me that I, not that I didn't know I had, but like it just builds because losing is so shitty that it's almost like I have to deal with that, you know, of being a loser. <laughs> I have to deal with that. Um, which is a different thing to deal with than like winning. A lot more mental, I feel like. It's hard to explain, I guess. You just have to uh, have to go through the whole process of like diagnosing how you did, why things went wrong. And, and I can honestly say now though, like for the last two races, it's like, I felt like semi, it was out of my control on what happened. These ultras, dude, they're hard. Like they're hard on your body. So when your body starts to go through shit, um, you know, it's not like you can do much about that. You know, if I were to say I can get better at something, I, I need to get better at moving at a consistent pace when shit gets really bad. Um, just to at least get me to the next aid station to like get, try to stay ahead of these cutoffs. You gotta have a lot of luck in these things for sure. You gotta have a lot of luck. Um, there's a big amount of grit and a little bit of luck. And did I find peace with this race um, after DNFing? I don't know if I have peace with not finishing something, you know? Yeah, yeah, What's what's uh, what I've gotten out of it, yeah, definitely is more of a fire, like to get back to training. I don't know. I mean, I don't think that that one race gave me Maybe that, like not finishing something, like I said, gets you back to like, okay, back to training, back to like what we need. We need bigger miles, like 
what are we going to do when our stomach gets upset? Like, carry Zofren. You know, like there's going to be some things that I learned from it for sure. Like you learn in everything that nobody can tell you. You have to go out and experience these races and do things. And, you know, I fall on my face twice. So, but guess what? I'm learning a lot. And so like one day when I finally do get one done, um, you know, I'll, I'll have that much more experience of having missed two of them. This was a 50-50 <laughs> attrition on this, you know, 60 people finished and 61 people didn't finish. Um, sucks to be on that bottom half, uh, knowing that like, well, that means 50% of people did finish it. So you can diagnose that however you want, you know, like none of it really matters. It's just, you know, it's back to training. This is our lifestyle. I think, I think I ex I'm learning to accept more that I do really like this world of ultra, um, especially now because it's something like, it's not like I conquered it, like it's conquering me. And um, many things that I've tried in my life, like if I was good at it initially, I'm like, I lose interest in it. And now this thing's caught me hooked for going on six years because it, every single one of them pushes me. like. And that's the thing is like, that's part of just my mentality, my brain is like, you know, if this thing was easy and we're like, oh yeah, we go out and run, you know, you go do one of these, it's not that big a deal. Like it's kind of hard, but like, it's not like that. It's just, each one is, uh, is different. And I think that's maybe what I've got the most out of this is because it has beaten me. It makes me want to keep trying it, you know, and that's the, that's the loophole. You do live a lifetime of emotions in these races. Like you go through these crazy highs and these lows and like nothing else can give you that. No, nothing else can give you what you feel at these things. So it's back to training, back to the drawing board. And uh, we got another race coming up in seven weeks. So it's gonna be a 50 miler. That's gonna be part of my new training program is to get these two more 50 milers, two more longer races, 50 Ks. Um, you can't replicate race speed and urgency in your training that's really hard to do at least for me it's, you move at a different pace when you go out and run a 20 miler and you get back to your car and you kind of hang out and when you go do a 50 miler you're in and out of an aid station just like you would be at a 100 miler just continuing to build it's still been a long process of building to be able to go run almost 60 miles and really my body actually felt really good like i had a tiny blister my body held up good, which I attribute to good training. Yeah, it was just, you know, when you start having internal issues, stomach stuff, I mean, that's a beast for in ultras. And it's pretty common. Like when you start getting into the ultra world, like GI issues are really common. And I've never had one, definitely never. I've rarely ever had an incident just without trying to run a hundred miles where I'm just like throwing up and feeling like shit where, you know, just to go lay on the couch. Thankful for the opportunity, I'm thankful for all the people I'm thankful for, my crew, um, Kinsey's parents come out and crewed with us now for like seven races and been a part of these and I'm so thankful for them um, being there and my buddy Jessup's parents were there, that was so cool, they drove up from Montana. My brother of course, um, this is his passion and his love and so I'm thankful for him um, being there and just sharing his love and passion for the, for the sport because uh, um, it definitely comes through in his attitude. He truly loves it, so it's fun to have him there. And he's he's kind of now that veteran that I look to, of like when shit gets bad, he knows what's going on, you know? Um, and then my buddy Jared drove up, like surprised us. That was super cool. I'm very, very grateful um, for him and to, to have good friends. And then of course my love, Kinsey, you know, I'm thankful for her and I don't know, everything she, she does for me and supported me and um, that's the relationship that we have as we go back and forth support each other and um, I'm happy that we found this crazy sport to both pursue and support each other and lean on each other and take care of each other's feet, you know, and those kind of things and like, dude, it is a solid crew. It's the best crew. It's like... I, they're so bulletproof and I'm like thankful for each and every one of them. You were racing. I was trying to kick your ass. I am thankful for you. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think that's cool. kind of wraps up the whole thing.
What's up guys, thanks for watching the second part of the I Am Tough 100 down in McCall, Idaho. If you missed the first part, I'll put a link right here to it. Um, other than that, make sure if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If there's something that we could do better or if there's stuff that you guys want to see from us, The Lost Compass, maybe how to's or anything like that, leave some comments below. Um, make sure you guys subscribe. I know when I look at the numbers, a bunch of people who watch our videos are not subscribed. So hit that subscribe button. We're so close to hitting a thousand subscribers. We're at like 741. So you guys could be a huge help in that. Um, it helps out with the algorithm and all the things that go into YouTube and creators that create that stuff. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time.